You know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, August 31. I'm Juliet bennett Ryla here with Ben Berkeley, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. It's the era of AI-generated everything now, and that reportedly includes foraging books available on Amazon. There is a potentially large problem with that, which is that eating the wrong plant can kill you. We're going to talk about that later, but first, let's discuss what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Legs for days. We are talking about Meta. It is rolling out legs for its Quest Home avatars who have previously relied on having uh, only torsos. This feature is available for beta users who can only see their legs by looking in the mirror. Now we're going to talk about Legos for days. The global toy market has declined by 7% so far this year, but Lego has been a bright spot. The Danish brickmaker saw sales grow 3% between January and June. We should mention here that this is the summer of Barbie. Mattel is down. Hasbro is down. This is actually a really a, a lone bright spot in a toy market that's been shrinking year by year. And so Lego is, is celebrating the win as kind of the, the one that has seen its sales grow. It is also very slow growth by comparison to where they have been. Hmm. I'm surprised Mattel isn't doing better with like, I mean, who doesn't want a patriarchy Ken Barbie of their of their own? True. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is all these are sales numbers up until June. So maybe okay, they're about okay. to just like rocket up wildly on, yes. on the strength of this movie. Let's let's hope that we're going to have better numbers in a couple months. Moving along, Apple will announce its new iPhone 15 on September 12th via an event mysteriously titled Wonderlust. If you want to put in bets now, I'm going to say they're going to call this their most powerful iPhone yet. That's probably a great prediction. I also think they're probably going to say this is their best camera yet. Oh, I mean, that's a given. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.S. Department of Transportation fined American Airlines $4.1 million over the many, many times passengers were kept on delayed planes on the tarmac. Burger King now must defend its Whopper in court after U.S. judge rejected the fast food change bid to reject a lawsuit that alleges its burgers are portrayed 35% larger than they are in real life. Uh, McDonald's and Wendy's facing similar lawsuits, this is a really bad time for people who, I guess, style food extra big for commercials. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, like, doesn't every fast food commercial look like 10 times more appealing than what you actually get? I never thought there was another way. No. And uh, I fear <laughs> for the future burger ad if these are successful lawsuits, but also I suppose false advertising is probably a good thing to be taking on in general. Fair. And finally, this is somewhat related. If you are getting a lot of spam texts from email addresses, Verizon customers can now block them by sending off to 4040. If you miss the barrage of scammy links to claim $150 Amazon gift cards, you can, I don't know why you do this, but you can text on to 4040. Don't recommend it. Also, this is potentially risky because if you're getting text messages from the emails of people that you want, it is an all or nothing proposition. So either mm. you are getting email uh, text from emails or none. So I think it's if you're if, if the vast majority of them are spammy, maybe you want to turn it off. All right. Fair enough. Moving on to our top story today, we're going to talk about mushrooms. We're going to talk about plants. We're going to talk about AI generated foraging books. So as you may recall from a previous podcast, Ben, you weren't on this one, but we all fell in love with Alexis Nicole Nelson's TikTok account. She is amazing. She talks about safely foraging for edible flowers, herbs, and more. Every video she posts is a delight. We love her. But recently, 
She posted about a book. It's called Edible Wild Plants of the Midwest by this guy, Chris M. Wilson, who is supposedly uh, like an expert forager who runs blogs, his bio says, on foraging. The problem, however, is that he does not appear to be a real person. Despite all of these blogs that he runs, Nelson pointed out that he has zero internet presence except for this random book. And the weirdest thing is that there are several foraging books that kind of have this same formula. They look very similar. They have these authors that supposedly have some sort of pedigree and yet zero internet presence. The prevailing theory here is that these are AI-generated books with AI-generated author bios and author images trying to cash in on the foraging trend, which is something that, you know, TikTokers like Nelson are at the forefront of. And uh, (laughs) there is an obvious problem with this. You just can't go around eating any plant that you find. No, no, you cannot. Uh, That is very dangerous. And so the concern is that these AI generated books might potentially be very dangerous for people who order them, not realizing they're AI generated and are maybe reading content that was not checked over carefully by um, experienced foragers. So this is in one word, terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like this feels like when we first talked about the story earlier this week, just internally, it felt like, okay, this is, this is it. This is where we're first going to have that first AI killed someone moment. (laughs) And I, that is really, really uh, would be just so upsetting. And I hope this doesn't happen. So I guess the first question is, what does Amazon have to say about this? They're the ones hosting this book or all these books. Well, so I reached out to Amazon. I just sent them an email and I was like, hey, do you have any statement about this? I sent them three examples of foraging books that um, were thought to be AI generated by both, you know, either Alexis Nelson or other people that had been doing their own research into the issue. And we got a statement back. It basically said that all publishers must adhere to our content guidelines, regardless of how content was created, and that they will remove any books that are in violation. I did see that of the three examples that I sent them, two have since been removed from the platform, including the one that we we mentioned a minute ago from the forager who runs a bajillion blogs but has no internet presence. That one is gone. You can't buy it on the platform anymore. It was kind of left unclear as to like what violations these would fall under. I guess they do have one. I, I looked through the violations and one is not misleading customers. So I guess if you are tricking people into thinking they're buying a book that's run by this extremely experienced forager who does not exist that would that would be misleading. But it's kind of left unclear as to how Amazon will handle this. And not only that, stay on top of what seems like a avalanche of AI generated content being self-published on the platform. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we've seen this in a lot of different other pockets, uh, maybe less life threatening than just kind of like the computer telling you, yeah, sure, eat that mushroom. No, no big deal. I'm trying to think of other examples. What, what have you seen out there? Okay, so I read a Reuters article that was talking about some AI-generated content. And and this is, every case of this is where the person has admitted, yes, I used ChatGPT to write this. So that includes children's books, which is kind of like, eh, all right. Uh, as long as I guess there's nothing weird in them, fine. Poetry collections, okay. I found an example of some very spicy sci-fi that AI apparently wrote, okay. And, and most of this is like pretty... I guess, pretty harmless. I think a lot of these things don't really have great reviews, but mostly harmless. But that also isn't accounting for how many so-called authors are using chat GPT to generate content, everything from the words as as well as the illustrations, and then not saying anything about it being AI generated. So it's unclear how much there actually is. I think the foraging thing is just like an example that got a lot of attention because it is so potentially dangerous. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, this is just the nature of the internet in general. Like, how do you moderate it? How do you kind of keep on top of just this endless pool of generation that you can't vet at all? And that's not to say Amazon doesn't bear responsibility for putting every best foot forward and doing so and keeping their consumers safe. But it's really hard to see how this how this is is tackled like as, i mean especially let's just assume ai will eventually be writing reviews for ai exactly. written yeah yeah so like you can kind of project ahead and see mm-hmm. this isn't this probably isn't going to get easier for any sort of you know shops or media organization any any one to try to keep this wave of ai imitators away and just at least even separating them out and labeling them is going to be enough of a gargantuan task, let alone 
removing them and making sure that they are actually viable products for consumers to to trust. Yeah. And it seems like, I guess, you know, without knowing what Amazon's inner workings are, it seems like there are ways to get the content removed, but it, it requires other people to flag it as the foragers have done here. I also found a, an example of an author, Jane Friedman. She found five books that she she noted were very low quality with her name on them. As And she is an author. She did not write these five books. She thinks someone, you know, basically showed their AI model, her blogs, and was like, hey, make a book. So now she's got these horrible books with her name on them. Like, that's not great. I mean, you and I are both writers. I think we both know how awful it would be if we found our byline on some complete rubbish and we're like, oh, this is humiliating and potentially career damaging. But but she's there to call them out and be like, I did not write these books. And it's, it's just so unclear how much of it, it, it there is and how you would even determine the difference between a poorly written book and an AI generated book. And AI is only getting better. So it's, it just seems like a big mess. So our takeaways from all of this would be, I would assume one, one, two, three, four, just down the list. Uh, do not eat a mushroom without confirming with a, an expert that it is safe to eat and confirming that that expert is actually a person. Weird that we have to say that. <laughs> Beyond that, any any other takeaways that, that people should be sitting with today? Yes. If, you, if something seems suspicious, perhaps do a little research. I think we're all going to have to do a little more research and fact checking in the time of AI. Um, I also talked to a mycologist, his name is Patrick Hickey, that I had interviewed for another story about fungus and mushrooms. And, you know, he was saying he didn't even trust the the apps that supposedly identify plants. So, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't either because I have one for houseplants and it gets them wrong all the time. I'm not trying to eat my houseplants, but my cat is and that's that's why I use them. So maybe don't do that either. And then if you are actually really interested in foraging, go follow this account. She's got some great references for you to make sure that you are actually using an expert and her feed is just delightful. So those are those are my tips, I guess. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trubiano and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at hustle.co slash email and we will see you tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Purry. My First Million features famous guests like Alex Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.